If God buried the body of Moses after he died, Deuteronomy 34 verse 6, then how could there be a dispute between Michael and Satan over his body, Jude 9? First, let's look at these two verses. Deuteronomy 34 verses 5 to 6, So Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. 6. And he, God, buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no man knows his burial place to this day. Jude 9, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So, how do we reconcile these two verses? After studying this quite a bit, I find two answers to be the most plausible. First, we learn earlier in Numbers that God would not allow Moses to enter the promised land because he had sinned against him. Numbers 20 colon 2 13 also see Deuteronomy 32 verses 48 to 52. God actually brought Moses' life to an end. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 tells us that Moses was perfectly healthy when he died. After the death of Moses, Deuteronomy 34 verse 5, we are told that God who buried him. Deuteronomy 34 verse 6. But, did God bury him immediately? Maybe not. This is where, Jude 9, might come into play. After the death of Moses, as the body of Moses laid there, perhaps Michael was there to protect it. He is shown to be the chief guardian angel, an archangel, Daniel 12 verse 1, Daniel 10 colon 13 and 21, Revelation 12 verse 7. Satan was also there, and he wanted the body. Why he wanted it, we do not know for sure, but we can be sure it was for a sinister reason. The reason given by most scholars, and what seems to me to be the most logical answer, is that he likely wanted to use the body of Moses to create a shrine or idol that the Israelites would worship instead of God. This was certainly a good strategy, as we see that they have already done this with the golden calf, and they turned the bronze serpent of Numbers 21,4-9 into an idol that they worshipped all the way until Hezekiah became king about 700 years later when he destroyed it. Note, the Israelites would also likely have had to leave the promised land to worship at this shrine or idol to Moses. Knowing Satan's plot, how could God stop it? By stepping in and burying the body of Moses himself in a place where no one, including Satan, would know where it was. But the second theory is very interesting too. In this theory, after Moses died, God buried him. But after a period of time, we don't know how long a period of time, God raised the body of Moses and brought it to heaven. What, you might be saying? Let me explain. We know that at a future date, God is going to put Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Matthew 17 verses 1 to 9. We also know, of course, that since God had taken Elijah up to heaven bodily, without dying, 2 Kings 2 verse 11. He almost certainly was at the Mount of Transfiguration in that same body, right? Doesn't it make sense that Moses would also appear in his body? So, how could Moses get that body? If God had previously brought it to heaven from where he had hidden it. Note, Moses may also be one of the two witnesses who appears bodily in Revelation 11 verses 3 to 12. This would be where Jude 9 comes in for this theory. 
After God raised the body of Moses from its hiding place, there was a war over that body between Michael and Satan. Satan likely either wanted the body for himself, for some sinister purpose, or he simply wanted to stop what was happening. This war appears to have ended after Michael says, The Lord rebuke thee. Note, a majority of scholars believe that Jude 9 was taken from a pseudepigraphical work called The Assumption of Moses. Origen and Clement of Alexandria confirm this. The definition of assumption in this work means the taking up of a person into heaven, Webster's. This also seems to fit with this second theory. Jude 9 is one of several places in the New Testament that appears to quote from extra-biblical sources. While these sources may contain some truths, this does not mean that they were God-inspired works. It is worth noting that this war closely parallels another war in the heavenly realm, which is found in Daniel 10 verses 10 to 14, when Satan hinders the angel Gabriel from answering a prayer for 21 days, until Michael steps in to stop Satan. Deuteronomy 34, The Death of Moses. A. Moses on Mount Nebo. 1, 1 to 3, The Vision of the Promised Land. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. A. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, as Israel camped on the plains of Moab. Moses climbed the heights of Mount Nebo, from which he could see the promised land, as far as the western sea. B. And the Lord showed him all the land, this was God's sweet grace to Moses. Though he could not set foot in the promised land, God allowed him to see it. Standing on the peak of Nebo on the collection of mountains called Pisgah, Moses stood on what is the modern nation of Jordan, looking towards the promised land. Why did the devil want it? The true biblical explanation is as follows. The first of the Ten Commandments states that we are to have no other gods before the true God, Exodus 20 verses 1 to 3. Satan the devil, always looking for ways to deceive humans, wanted to make Moses and his grave an object of worship. Israel had formerly been guilty of worshipping the golden calf, see Exodus 20 and 32. The body and tomb of Moses, the revered leader of the nation, would have almost certainly would have been a must-see, place to visit by the people of Israel. It could have easily been used by the devil to lead people away from the true God. Strange as it may seem, the practice of revering an important person's corpse does indeed occur today. Those in Russia have access to viewing the embalmed corpses of Stalin or Lenin. Many countries like the United States have a tomb for the unknown soldier where people go and dwell on the past. Memorials force us to dwell in the past, rather than dwelling in the present and going on with our lives. Some people worship these types of memorials as icons. God wants our worship to be only of Him, instead of some shrine to remind us of the past. Satan the devil will use anything he can, even the body of Moses to try and direct the focus of human minds away from God and onto something that is physical and temporary.